So you can get Mastodon running in Reclaim Cloud. Right now, we do not have a marketplace one-click installer or an installer at all. So this is gonna be a bit of a manual process, um, but this is for those who do wanna play with it in Reclaim Cloud. Um, we are investigating the possibilities of a one-click installer, um, so keep that in mind. But for the sake of this um, tutorial, how-to, et cetera, there's a couple of things we wanna do before we even get into the installation of Mastodon. And so this will take you through some of the requirements you wanna kinda of have before you go down that road. So um, let's get started. I am gonna shrink, and then we're gonna look at some of those requirements. First of all, this is the installing from source guide from Mastodon, it's on their official docs page. And for the sake of this video, we're gonna be looking at two different bits of it. Preparing your machine, and we'll do some of what's in here, but not all of it. So this is basically getting your server up and running and ready, and then installing the code from Mastodon. So those are the two pieces. And um, I'm gonna start by saying this is specific to Reclaim Cloud. You can do this in other places. Um, obviously, but this is for those who want to play with Mastodon on Reclaim Cloud. So in that spirit, here is the Reclaim Cloud interface. Um, this is my personal account. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to start a new environment. And I am going to install this on a VPS. So this is a um, VPS. I am going to use Debian 11.5 because We've tested it and that does work. And I am going to click next and then it's gonna ask me for some information, like, and then a couple of things I wanna do here is I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make it like a four gig server, which is what they recommend. I've seen recommendations as I've been reading around and four gigs is probably a good instance. And keep in mind, this is a server that you can run your personal um, Mastodon on, but by and large, if you're running a server, you're probably going to want to run it for a broader community. Otherwise, you're going to join in um, someone else's community. So this is really, for an instance, if you're dead set on self-hosting your own Mastodon, or you want to create a community for others. So usually, as you create a community from others, those resources for the server are going to grow and grow. So um, again, this gives you an idea of how much it could cost monthly based on that, but really this is just um, an example of what's possible. And here you wanna make sure you have an IP4. So the server instance, this Debian 11.5, does need an IP address. And then I am going to call it, I have a domain that I'll be using, but I'm gonna be calling this social DS106. Um, I already have a server set up for DS106. This is really just a test server um, that I have a separate domain for so I can go through the entire process. So we have the VPS, Debian 11.5. We made sure that the IP4 was on. We also made sure that we had up to four gigabytes for this server. And then finally, we named the environment and then we chose our region. And so you can see here, depending upon where you are, you may want to choose a region closest to you. And then after that, it's pretty much all we'll do in Reclaim Cloud for now because there's a whole bunch of other things we have to set up. So I'm going to click create this create. And um, at some point, this should start creating the environment. There it is. It's creating. We'll come back to this. So put a pin in that, we'll be back. The next step is what domain. So one of the things about Mastodon you wanna keep in mind is that when you set up an environment or a server, you don't wanna change the domain post facto. You don't wanna go back and say, oh, actually I really wanted this domain. So there is some prep you have to do before you actually go through the installation process. And I'm gonna take you through that prep right now. First is choose a domain and make sure you can access the DNS records because you're gonna to have to update them. So for the sake of this video, I'm using Cloudflare. You can do the same thing in cPanel's DNS config for a domain, 
Um, they're fairly similar. I have my domains managed in Cloudflare for a variety of reasons, DDoS protection, playing with some of their load balancing, um, distributing images through R2 or other objects. So there's a bunch of reasons, but use no reason you have to use Cloudflare. I recommend you play with it, but you can use cPanels DNS as well. So there you go. Um, the domain I am gonna be setting up one is this one, ds106.social. In terms of domain names, you can pretty much use anything. You can use a subdomain like social.ds106.us, which is one I'm using for the actual Mastodon for DS106. This is one I bought as a test. I'll be redirecting it to the main DS106 server. But for the sake of this, we can start fresh and I'll show you exactly what you need to be to do. So in order to get a domain into Cloudflare, you need to add the domain and then point the name servers from wherever it's registered to Cloudflare. And so that's a separate process, fairly easy, but that is not documented here. Once you are set up, you'll have an overview of your um, visitors. You can see fresh domain, nothing. The tab you're really interested in right here is DNS. We're going to go and we're going to add a series of DNS settings to this. So we now have Cloudflare. We have an account. We have pointed our name servers. You can see mine here. I've already done this. And now I'm ready to add records. So boom, that's Cloudflare. We're kind of set up. Let's jump and we're going to come back to this. Um, because the next thing we need to do, as you can see, there's a lot of prep to get Mastodon set up. The next thing we need to do is we need to have a transactional email service. Um, and that's what's behind me right now. This is Mailgun. There are others like SendGrid. Um, there are a bunch of different transactional emails. You may decide to set up your own SMTP server. You could do that. I have had a lot of luck with Mailgun. It's worked pretty well for me, so I stick with it. It's also very affordable. So I am going to use Mailgun in this um, how-to as the demonstration. So I am going to set up a new domain in Mailgun. And this is kind of worth looking at for a second because I have several domains, bava.social, social.ds106. A lot of these are using transactional email service, whether it's Ghost, Mastodon, Discourse. A lot of these next generation apps need transactional email because they're often not built into the app. So I am going to add a new domain here, and you guessed it, that new domain is going to be ds106.social. And this is going to allow me to send email from that domain. What I have to do, though, is I have to link this domain on Mailgun with the domain's DNS settings on Cloudflare. So I'm going to take you through that now. First things first, the domain region, for the sake of this video, I'm going to put it in the U.S. It can be EU. That's really based on... Uh, where you are and what works well for you in terms of GDPR, etc. And at that point, it said, okay, we got the domain. We know where you want the SMTP server to live. Now, here are your DNS settings. And this is important because this is actually the settings that you're going to take from Mailgun and put in those DNS settings for Cloudflare. So without further ado, let's do that. I'm going to copy this value. The first record is a text record, and it's for ds106.social. And I am going to go back over here. I'm going to add a record, and you guessed it. It's going to be a text record. So I'm going to search for that. I'm going to put the value in, which is this include colon mailgun.org. And then this is for ds106.social. And after that, I can simply save that record. That is one of at least four, but maybe five records you'll be adding from Mailgun. So we're going to add another record. It's also going to be a text record. And then I'm going to go back to Mailgun and find that record for you. Here it is. I'm going to copy it. And then this is the first part of the record. We'll come back for that. This is this. So that's all that content. And then this name, the required name, is right here, which often refers to as the host name. So we're going to do that, and that now has the text record for this name with this content. Again, save it. That's our second record. 
We're gonna add a third record, but this time it's not gonna be a text record. It's going to be an MX record or a mail exchange record. And so we're gonna go back here. Here are our MX records. I'm gonna copy this value. I now know the priority is 10 and the host name again is ds106.social. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna put the priority as 10. I'm gonna put the server as mxa.mailgun.org. And finally, I'm gonna do this as ds106.social and we're good. That's three. The final necessarily required record is this other MX record. It's basically MXB. So you have mxa.mailgun.org and now mxb.mailgun.org. And it has all the same um, settings. It just changes from MXA to MXB. The time to live, and again, I wanna make sure the record is not an A record, but an MX record. Learn from my mistakes. The priority is 10, and then this should be MXB. There we go. Okay. So I can now save this record and I have the four required records. Let's go back to Mailgun. I have the two text records. I have the two MX records. And finally, if you wanted, you could add a C name record to your DNS, which will allow you to track the opening and closing. Um, I'm gonna do this. I don't necessarily like to track people's opening and closing. I'm not overly concerned about that. But if you wanted to, I would go to type CNAME, hostname, email.ds106.social, and then this value. So again, just to show you how you would do it, you would go to add a record. You'd look for the CNAME. This again is email, sorry, email.ds106.social. And then the target is mailgun.org. This should all be set, and we're going to save it, right? And I'm going to just check my records on that CNAME. And I am correct. Okay, so all my records for uh, Mailgun are set. I've added them to Cloudflare. Now it's just a matter of them verifying. Now, this could take a while. I found, though, that it doesn't. With Cloudflare and Mailgun, it can almost be instantaneous. Uh, I'm probably setting myself up for a failure here, but let's just try and verify these DNS settings and see if they're found. Actually, three of four of them have already been found. I'm sure this fourth one will be, but let me just check the values to make sure I didn't mess anything up. And I didn't, so it's just really a matter of verifying it yet again. And I imagine it will be found here shortly. And at that point, yeah, it's set up. So literally, this is all in real time. Within seconds, you have your transactional email service, in this case, through Mailgun, all set up. Excellent. So we're getting there. There is something else, though, I want to point to, and these are things you're going to need. So you're going to want, as we get towards the actual installation of Mastodon, to write some of this stuff down and save it. So here are our domain settings. Just to give you a sense, this can be confusing. Um, you have this sending, right? And then you can actually control which domain you see. So for example, I wanna to go to this domain. And once you do, you wanna go down here to domain settings. And once you click on that, it will give you the specific domain settings for that domain. And in this event, you'll see the DNS records. These are the ones I just added, all verified. And then beyond that, and this is really where it gets important, and this is the information you need to set up Mastodon, are these SMTP credentials. So you're gonna need this login, postmaster at ds106.social. For you, it will be postmaster at whatever domain you're using. You're gonna wanna reset this password to something you'll remember, or actually, no, it's not true. You won't remember it. They'll give it to you, and it's a long, secure password. So copy it and paste it so you're ready to use it on the install. It will look something like this. Um, are you sure you wanna reset it? I am sure. And then down here it will say, okay, copy it. So what I do is I copy that password and then I find a blank document. This is my process. And I'm gonna copy, paste it in there. 
You'll see this eventually. I'm not going to use this server, so I'm not too concerned about you seeing any of my passwords during this tutorial. Keep that in mind, though. You're going to need to copy them. You're going to need to keep them safe. Um, the other thing here is this SMTP mailgun org you will need that it will be default but copy it just in case because that's important information and then the other one is we're going to use port 587 but both smtp.mailgun.org will be default in the mastodon setup as will 587 if you are using the eu server the smtp mailgun.org will be different so keep that in mind so I have my username, postmaster at, I have at ds106.social, the full thing. I have my password, I have my SMTP server, host name, and I have the port. I'm good. I have now everything I need from Mailgun to make Mastodon work. So at this point, we are at a stage where we have our domain. We have that domain set up in Cloudflare. We have the DNS settings for that domain set up with Mailgun so that we can send transactional email, which is email for resetting passwords, emails for new accounts. All of that email will be managed through Mailgun now. Finally, we want to deal with offloading media. So this is the final piece of the setup. This is the one I struggled the most with. So um, I'll just give you a heads up there. But I think... And let me get here. I'm going to push this down. I'm going to probably be invisible now because I'm going to take you through AWS's S3, which is what I used to get this all set up. So I'm going to remove myself here. And then now you should see AWS's um, main dashboard. A couple of things on this. Why are we doing this? This is basically to take any media you or your users on your server upload and offload it off the server. You'll find that media can quickly accumulate. Space is not infinite on Reclaim Cloud, so we highly recommend you use a service like S3 or um, Wasabi is another one I've heard. Backblaze is another one that people have talked about, um, particularly Taylor here at Reclaim. And I've tried Cloudflare R2 and DigitalOcean Spaces. And I know for sure Cloudflare R2 does not work yet because it doesn't have a full S3 spec. I don't know about DigitalOcean Spaces, but I've had no luck with it. So for the time being, I am sticking with S3 because I know it works. So um, Wasabi, I haven't tested. Backblaze, I have not tested. But I do and can confirm that S3 works. So that's why I'm using it here. Otherwise, I would avoid it like the plague. Okay, so now that we have s3 working or now that we have s3 we're in our dashboard i'm going to show you how to set up an account and um, i really hope this helps you because this was where i kind of had some issues as we might say okay two things you're going to need out of s3 you're um, out of the aws console you're going to need the i am which is kind of basically user and policy management for any of the services we're going to create a user in IAM, and then we're going to create a bucket in S3. And we're going to basically take the um, user's information, the IAM and the S3, um, or the policy information, and we're going to apply it to a particular bucket. And I'll show you that in a second. So let's look at IAM. IAM is a place where you have users and create users. I am not a... AWS S3, I am not overly fluent in this area, so I do very basic. And this is, my advice to you is gonna be very basic. There might be people out there who have better advice, please take it. This is basic advice to get your S3 bucket up and running. So please keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna to go to users. You see I have other users that are part of other buckets, which is mainly what I've used uh, Amazon's AWS for. And I'm going to add a new user. And that user's name is going to be Bava. No, it's going to be DS106Social. Okay. And I am going to make sure I get an access key. That's what I want. I have the username and it's this access key and secret access key that I will need for the Mastodon setup. Keep it in mind. 
Next, permissions. This, you know, this will kind of vary based on your familiarity with um, S3, but what I have found is I need permissions for full access. So you need Amazon S3 full access. I have a bucket that already has that. So I can just click on that existing bucket and it will apply it, or you can attach existing policies from another space. You can search for a policy, but you really want Amazon S3 full access to that bucket. That's the permissions you want. And there's other places to do that, but for the sake of this, we're gonna go on to tags. I am not using tags. This is really just a test for me. You could put this in as a way to search for tags. And then you'll notice that it's taking the policy, this Amazon S3 full access, from my existing policy. If you don't have one, you can create one, which is Amazon S3 full access. And then now I'm gonna create this user. And as it creates the user, it does two important things. It gives me my access key ID. Again, I'm gonna copy and paste that, just like I did with the SMTP information. So you'll see the SMTP information above. And then now this is gonna be my AWS info. And this, I can go here, this is Mailgun. And the one thing I didn't include in Mailgun was the postmaster at ds106.social. So there's that, and that's all that information. Here's my AWS, this is my access key. And then I am gonna also get my secret key. And again, I will not be using this server after I do it. This is something you shouldn't be sharing <laughs> as an FYI. But again, this is, I've done this on several occasions. So this is not a server I'll be using. It's really just a test server. And then finally, there's my access key my secret access key to be clear. I'm gonna grab that. And then I am gonna go over to BB Edit and I'm gonna paste that in there. Perfect. Those are the two bits of information we're gonna need so that AWS's S3 can communicate with our server. All right, at that point, let me go back here and say, we're great. That's IM, that's what we've needed it for. The next piece we need to do is to go into S3. So we've done this, we've created a user with that access policy. Now we go into S3 and we're gonna create a new bucket. And the bucket is gonna also be called DS106 Social. I don't have anything like that yet, that's right. So I'm gonna create a new bucket. It's gonna be called DS106 Social. Oh, can I spell? Yes. The region, you can decide where you want it. This region, and it's the default often is US East dot, uh, hash one or dash one. So US dash East dash one. And then I could copy settings from an existing bucket. You probably don't have an existing bucket or you may, so you could do that. The issue I had on my last go around was I needed to do ACLS, ACLs enabled. And then bucket owner preferred, but that was it. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I leave all access open and I acknowledge that I'm doing because this is gonna be a public bucket. So I have my bucket name, my region, I have ACLs enabled, I have bucket owner preferred, that's fine. I have all of this unchecked. I've acknowledged that I'm crazy and leaving it open and then I'm gonna create the bucket. And at this point, we should have a new bucket called DS106 Social. That's it, right, amongst the others. And if I go to it, I'm gonna have the objects. There's nothing in it yet, though when there is, the objects will be listed here. My properties. So I have US East, which is information I am gonna need. So again, I'm gonna go back to my editor and put some of this stuff in there because it will come up again. I'm gonna need this, this Amazon resource name. So let me go back here. And I'm not gonna need it for Mastodon necessarily. I'm gonna need it for the policy I set up for this bucket. So stay tuned, that's coming in a second. And then um, this tells me my creation date, all of this information, and then all of here. Now we're almost done. 
there is one more thing we have to do. This is we have to create a policy for the bucket. And this threw me off a little bit because you got to write some JSON or copy some JSON. I, I'm not writing JSON, that's for sure. Copy some JSON. And I found the easiest way to do this was with a tool called the AWS Policy Generator. It's at awspolicygen.s3.amazonaws.com. You can find it here. And I found that you can create a whole bunch of different policies. For us, it's gonna be S3 bucket. We're gonna allow, and the principle is going to be basically a wild card or an asterisk, which means pretty much any user you have in your account. And we're gonna give that user access to all actions. And then this is where we need that Amazon resource name that I copied. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna copy it again from my handy dandy um, notepad or BB edit. And then I'm gonna go back to Safari. I'm gonna paste this in there and I'm gonna add this statement. Once I've done this, I have a statement for pretty much any user um, that I have in my AWS account is allowing to access and basically full access to that bucket. I am now gonna generate that policy and this is the JSON um, basically block I need to add. So I'm gonna got it, I'm gonna close. And the last bit is me adding that block policy. And at the point I do add this, you'll know it's right because it will basically say, this block is public, right? So this access is public and it gives you a big like, be careful. So I now know that the permissions are correct. I have the properties I need, which are namely the AWS key, the secret access key, the region, and the bucket name. Again, the bucket name is DS106 Social. And I should have, and let me just double check here, everything. I have the keys. I'll put the bucket name as DS106 Social. And at this point, I am pretty much set in terms of both Mailgun, AWS, and Cloudflare, which we'll return to right now. So I'm going to come back here. You're going to be able to see me again. There I am. Um, and I'm going to actually return to um, the DNS here because there's one more record we have to add for the DNS. And that can only be added after the server is fully set up. And so if you look here and reclaim cloud, we're finally back there. Social DS106 has been set up. And if I click here under this node, it also has a public IP address. So if I copy that public IP address, I now am gonna paste it into an A record, and that's gonna be the main, so let me try this again. That's gonna be the main ds106.social server, and so this is now pointing that domain name to the server, so it will work, and I'm gonna click Save. Yes. So at this point, we pretty much have all the records we need. We have the VPS spun up. It has not been installed. Mastodon has not been installed yet. We have um, all of our Mailgun settings, DNS settings in Cloudflare. We have Mailgun working and we have AWS bucket set up. So at this point, we have done all the pre-config we can do. I think the one last thing arguably we can do is we could do an update of apt for the server and get all of the things update. But I think we're gonna do that in the second part of this um, series, which is actually installing Mastodon on the server. So this was kind of like the pregame, how you get your server set up and ready to go. Um, and then once you have everything we talked about in this video, you're ready for the next one, which is let's get Mastodon installed up and running. Okay, so we'll see you in the next video. Good luck. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Let us know. Big fan.